Okay, we're going to try to work a pass of the, uh, the ISS uh, here in the next couple minutes. Uh, it's a pass that is going to come pretty much uh, to the north of us a little bit. It's going to be about a 10 minute pass. It's about three minutes away according to the computer. Uh, and um, we're going to work it with the, the DM710. Uh, Oops. So uh, what we'll do here is show you how to put it into um, TNC mode and um, get things ready for the pass. The first thing we need to do is put it on the correct uh, frequency. Uh, for the ISS it's 145.825 using APRS. So let's uh, Get to the correct band here. Uh, 145, 825. Okay, you want to put the squelch right, pretty loose, right to the point where it's uh, it's static. Then we put it in a TNC mode by hitting TNC. It's opening, and now it's in the uh, APRS mode. You can see it's uh, it went on the air to send a beacon. Now the other thing is because we're using an indoor antenna up in the attic which I'm just using a uh, a vertical um, ground plane we're just we're gonna go ahead and bump up the power to high which will uh, get us through to the uh, to the satellite here. Uh, so we're gonna wait for the pass as soon as we start hearing some packets or we'll start beaconing to try to get some packets. Now I will say that since uh, RS zero ISS four uh, kind of went down uh, I think they removed the radio recently you know today is uh, September 6 2013 uh, the packets are a lot weaker than they used to be they used to be really strong packets but the past few passes uh, in the last few days uh, things have been uh, uh, not nearly as uh, strong so it's a little bit more difficult to work it okay the satellites uh, now in range you can see it's um, just coming uh, where where the yellow dot is. Um, and it's just coming over the uh, uh, into we're just coming into their footprint. Uh, so right when uh, right when it gets to uh, right about where the yellow dot is, we'll have the strongest signals. I tend to get a little bit better uh, pass right to the very north and to the east the way my antenna is set up. Uh, so we'll start listening for some packets here, and uh, we'll take it from there. Let's do the squelch. I don't, still don't see anything. Um, with this radio, you can instant beacon by turning off the beacon, turn it back on. And then uh, the other thing we're going to do is pull up a web page we use to see if uh, the ISS is actually hearing our packets. And... Uh, that up right now. And that's called uh, ARISS.net. And there's the, uh, the world map. And it shows the, uh, the most recent we already have, uh, well, five minutes ago. There was a, uh, a K6 station was heard, um, and those are the actual raw packets that you have uh, coming across that the ground stations are hearing, including a CQ from the RSS. I just heard a packet, so let's try to beacon to them and let's see if we show up on the uh, on the uh, web page here. Let's beacon back. Pretty weak packets from what they used to be. Let's try sending a message direct to the ISS. And we'll also try to send it to one of the ground stations that we know is usually on the air here.
Okay, so it actually heard one of our packets during our beacon, because we're now showing up on the ARISS page. You can see the raw packet that we sent, which was in a complete packet, but I got enough uh, of the header that they were able to pick us up. Uh, you can see it was digipeded through the uh, space station and it was picked up by WB2LMV, uh, one of the ground stations uh, working on an iGate that brings it over to the internet. And if you click on my uh, on my uh, call sign there in 3FHW, you'll see the raw packet. You'll see that it put me on the map uh, at my location. And then we can go back to the iGate. And it doesn't look like there's been anybody new that has uh, gotten through to the space station since us, or the last ones. So let's uh, let's continue to try to beacon. And that was pretty good. Uh, we got a my position, so that meant that we actually got a uh, confirmation back from the um, space station saying that they they actually heard our uh, beacon. Let's try to let's try to send another message here to the to the space station itself and one to the ground stations. And then this lists out the uh, the stations that were heard. So K0 KOC-1 was heard uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, so that was one of the stations we actually heard, which is one of the local eye gates in Frederick, Maryland. If you look up at the uh, the web page again, you'll see that uh, some of the eye gates have reported in. Uh, I believe this is an eye gate. Uh, that might actually just be an end user. But you can see the uh, the raw packets now that are coming in. Quite a few more. Uh, they actually uh, I digipeded through the um, space station to the space station. It was confirmed as being received by a um, a ground station. And you can see some of the other other uh, stations that have heard uh, packets coming through. Let's try beaconing again. If you actually look at the position of the, uh, the space station to our location, we're right in the middle of the, the footprint. It's right above us. So uh, this is when we start getting some of the, the better packet traffic, uh, given our setup. An outdoor antenna will give you a much better result. Unfortunately, I can't have an outdoor antenna here. Um, so I kind of just make do with what we, we can use. Now I do have a vertical up there. I could put like an egg beater antenna. It would probably give us a little bit more of a of a uh, better radiation pattern for the satellites. That might be something we'll do. The other thing I did, you can see when you click on my uh, my uh, call sign on the web page, you can see where I've sent today to the space station a message. Now what we can do is, we can see if the space station actually received it by going to here, and you can see that they did receive it. So they did get my message, which was nothing but a blank really. Um, unfortunately, because I don't have uh, a packet program actually set up on the computer to do, it's a little bit more tedious to input data into the uh, the D710. Uh, we can also look at that ground station, the I gate I was talking about, to see if they received my message, and they did. 
So, actually, I'm sorry, this is from a couple days ago that they received a message from me. So they did not receive that, that one I, I uh, pinged out to them or packed it out to them. Here's the, uh, the map view. Showing all the stations at uh, the, um, the space station is hearing. Here's my call sign. Here's one of the call signs of that ground station, the eye gate that I was um, uh, trying to get a hold of. And then I'll also show the current position of the ISS, which should be somewhere up in here. But I currently don't see it. So, But that's, uh, that's a pretty cool thing with this website, too. Let's try beacon in again to see if we can get a couple more responses here. Okay, so it's pretty weak now. As I said, when the other uh, radio was being used up on the on the space station, it was uh, it was um, a lot stronger. Really good um, packets were coming through. We're just about to lose the uh, the pattern here, uh, the footprint. So we're just going out of it. It's saying uh, basically at 10:30 we're going to be out of range, and it is 10:29. Uh, so that's pretty much how you you work the space station on packet. Um, using the uh, Kenwood uh, TMD710. Uh, it's really easy to use. The built-in TNC is easy to use once you figure out the commands and how to do things. It's, uh, it's, it's a breeze to actually work it. Um, not real flexible unless you have a program set up on the computer, which I have done, uh, and uh, use a UISS for that. And then what you can do is actually, you, once you confirm that you have actually worked the uh, space station. Uh, what I do is uh, I print off this uh, iGate uh, reporting for the date that I work them. I sent, I've sent them a QSL card and then what you end up getting back is a nice QSL from the space station confirming that you worked them uh, via packet. So, this N3FHW, have fun.